Is that even like clean? It's working. Hello. Hi. Hey. Hey you guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Rachel and I'm a first year medical student. If you've been around for a while on my channel, you know that a few months ago, I don't even know how long ago it was, but a few months ago I posted this video on my channel about how I study in medical school because I thought I knew what I was doing. It's no longer a thing. <laughs> I don't even know. No, just no mission abort, abandon that method completely. It is not, no, no. The point is my study methods have changed. They have matured. I realized that those previous study methods that I used, they weren't feasible and they weren't efficient. They didn't, no. And that was before I knew about Anki. That was just, everything has changed and it's for the better. My study methods are honestly savage. They're just... Also, I'm sorry that the light keeps changing. The clouds keep going in front of the sun and ruining my lighting, which is really unfortunate. If you're not already a part of our herd, please go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell also for notifications when I upload. And if you're not following me on Instagram already, you totally should be. My Instagram handle is at Rachel Southerd, just my name. So if you wanna know how I study in medical school, go ahead and keep watching. Let's get started. To stay organized when I'm studying and to have all my lectures in one spot, I like to have what's called a pass tracker. I like to make this pass tracker myself and it is a completely customizable Excel spreadsheet. You guys can totally make one yourselves. A lot of you guys ask me to post mine. However, I encourage you to make one on your own because it's tailored to exactly what you need, not what I need, because it might be completely different. So I make a new Excel spreadsheet for every block and let me just show you a previous block. This was for neuro. So right here on the left hand corner, I have all my lecture titles and I'll just go week by week and start listing all the lectures. And then I have the date of when they happened, how many passes and passes for me, what a pass on a lecture is. If I've seen the lecture, like watched it, that's one pass. And every time I look through another PowerPoint, that is another pass. Typically, I don't ever rewatch a lecture. I get the one pass from visually watching and the rest of my passes come from me actually going through the lecture PowerPoint and taking notes or um, just reading, reviewing, whatever it is. So a lot of times medical students might not even see a lecture or they'll see it only one time before they get tested on it. Personally, I like to see it three to four times and that's just my own personal preference. If you don't have time to get to three or four times, at least get two solid passes of that material. I have my passes here, then I have the difficulty. I rate it one out of five. And this helps me keep track of, say I'm coming towards the end of my block where I need to really focus on my weaknesses or what was really difficult for me. I will find the numbers that are higher, like a four, fives, and I will go back to those lectures and spend more time on them. And then after I get done with another pass on it, I'll end up rating the lecture again to see if it's gotten easier for me and so if you notice by the end of this neuro block we've got a lot of ones a lot of twos when a lot of these when I first started this block a lot of them were fives because it was so much information it was really challenging but by the end I mastered the material and I have a bunch of ones so I have a pre-class section and this is when I use other resources to prime myself before class. I used to prime myself by doing all the learning objectives for the lecture and reviewing the lecture ahead of time. No, I don't do that anymore. There's no time for that. There's so much information. It's not worth my time to do that. So I will use external videos and resources, which I will talk about later in this video, but that's what I put here. My post-class material is always boards and beyond. I will talk about that later as well. Right here, I'll list any challenges that I have just to highlight, you know, things that I really need to go back to. So what I do with this final review, I'm maybe two weeks out from my final. I will do my final pass on every lecture that we've had and I will divvy up per day given how much time that I have in that day to maybe get through 
three lectures, eight lectures if they're really simple lectures. And I will start going through every single lecture from the beginning of the block. And by the time I get to the final exam, a lot of that stuff is very fresh to me. It's, it's in my brain. I've seen it a bunch of times. So that is my pass tracker. I highly recommend that you guys make one for yourselves. It just helps you stay organized. All right, so now that I have the pass tracker out of my way, we can really get into my study methods and what I do Monday through Friday, what I do Saturday and Sunday. So first thing I do every single day after, of course, waking up and getting my coffee, getting ready, is I do my Anki do cards. I have a very basic Anki tutorial. I will link that right up here for you guys. However, I highly recommend that you check out other Anki videos on YouTube. It's a space repetition learning tool it's amazing please check it out if you don't know what it is let me just show you briefly what i mean by do cards and so the do cards is whatever shows up in this column here where and they'll be in green when there's blue cards that means they're new and they're in this new column they're new cards that you haven't seen that you need to do so i do those cards and i try to get all my do cards done in the morning one thing about anki is that if you have any do cards you need to finish all of your do cards by the time you go to bed at night a lot of people don't use Anki correctly in the sense that they will leave due cards, they'll let them roll over, and then you just get a bunch of cards stacked on top of each other and you're not seeing the material as much as you should be. So those are for my due cards. Now, when I'm doing lectures, I typically, even when I have class, I don't go to class and I will stay home and I will do lectures online because the school streams it to us. So while watching my lecture, I simultaneously make Anki cards. I'll split the screen and I will have one half with my lecture and the other half with my Anki app and, I will, and I'll pause the lecture, make a card, play the lecture and just go like that throughout the entire lecture. And typically I will only make 30 to 50 cards per lecture and those consist of the high yield material that you really just are listening for, that you feel is the most testable material that the professor wants to test on. And so that's how I keep my cards to a minimum. So I'm not doing thousands of cards every day from lecture because it's just not doable. Okay, so my holy grail resource is Boards and Beyond. I love Boards and Beyond so much. Dr. Ryan does a fantastic job of breaking down material, gathering all of the important material, and then delivering it through a video in a really clear and concise way. And so I know a lot of people are going to be like, why are you studying for boards so early your first year? It's a thing, people do it, and I'm already doing it, I've been doing it, and it's fine. So I like to have my board curriculum that I make for myself, and then I use my medical school curriculum, and I do those simultaneously. So this is how I use Boards and Beyond with my curriculum. So for example, we are in GI right now, and so I will go to the GI section, and I will find all of the videos that correspond to my lectures. So we had a GI embryo lecture, so I watched this video. We have obviously anatomy, I've watched that one. Blood supply, the track, all of these videos we've had lectures on, and so I will watch these videos to supplement my lectures. And so once I watch these videos, I go back to Anki and I have what's called the Lightyear deck. And what I'll do is I'll incorporate that Boards and Beyond deck into my Anki decks. And so I do realize that after a while, you're gonna have so many Anki cards, which is true. But at the end of every block, I suspend all of the lecture cards that I made and I save all of my board content or my boards and beyond videos or sketchy videos, whatever Anki decks that I have are, that are for boards, I save those in a different section of my Anki. So I mature those cards. I'm doing cards all the way from the beginning of the year for boards and it's fine, I don't end up having that many cards per day even though it seems like a lot. It's just because the cards are matured and so they don't come back as often unless I get them wrong. So that's majority of how I study is using Anki and Boards and Beyond. But I do like and need other resources to supplement my lectures just to further my understanding. I like to outsource to other resources. These include Osmosis, YouTube videos like Ninja Nerd is really great, Dr. Najib, and then I also use textbooks. So I have a dead body book. I will link that down below. 
um, Netters, Costanzo is what I use for physiology. Moore's Clinical Anatomy is what I use for more textual based anatomy. What I also like to use is Sketchy and I will definitely be using this more next year because we have all of our farm and path next year. So those are the resources that I like to use on top of Boards and Beyond and Anki and my lectures. Definitely go check them out. I'm not going to discuss every single one. They're just listed there for you guys to go look at at your own leisure and maybe they'll help you too. All right, finally, I like to note take and I know a lot of you guys ask what I take notes on or how I take notes. I personally like to have physical notebooks. I know a lot of you guys are like, use iPads, why don't you use an iPad, 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 iPad. But there's something about having an actual notebook with a paper and pens, colored pens, that just helps me learn better. And I know it's not as ideal for the environment. However, I love my notebooks. I intend to keep them for the rest of my life. To me, they're art. They are a prized possession that I have. I've worked so hard on my notebooks and my notes that they're, they're really a piece of art once you're done with the block. Basically, this is how I incorporate note-taking into my study routine. Lectures happen Monday through Friday. I'm using Boards and Beyond, I'm watching lectures, I'm doing my Anki cards. Friday, Saturday, Sunday is when I use that pass tracker to go back and divvy up when I'm gonna go see those lectures again. So typically on the weekend, I like to go through all of the lectures from that week. And that's how I get three to four passes on every lecture. It's because I'm constantly going back to review the material, even if I just saw it a few days ago. And so when I'm going back through those lectures, I like to use those other resources. And this is when I'm also taking notes. So my notes consist of drawings, they consist of maps with arrows, just regular notes high yield stuff, whatever it is that I feel like I need to actually write down. What's funny is that I hardly ever go back to my notes to actually read them. Once I write that thing down on paper, that's usually the only time I see it. And honestly, your brain gets to a point as a medical student that you are operating at such a high capacity and your brain functions so well that a lot of times you only have to see things once for it to stick and, and to have you understand it and it stays there. And so when I write stuff down, when I take notes, a lot of that stuff is just for me to understand and it's not for memory purposes. Okay, so now I just wanna briefly discuss some extra things that I think that you guys should know about how I study and my schedule and all of that stuff. Typically, I wake up around 7.30 to 8 o'clock every single day, including the weekends, and I usually go to bed around midnight. I have been pretty good about not taking naps anymore during the day. I don't really get tired, but I also drink about three to four coffees per day and it's fine <laughs> everything is fine although i'm up all day obviously i'm not efficiently studying the whole day but i will say that i study f efficiently for at least eight hours a day and on those weekends closer to exam time i will amp it up and i will study even longer i know a lot of people can't study that long it takes a lot of patience and discipline and training to even get to that amount of endurance to study for that long. I know a lot of people that watch this video might say like, oh, you study too long, give yourself a break, you know, you're gonna burn out. Whatever it is, I want you guys to know that I am extremely in tune with my body. And if you've been watching me or you watch my vlogs, you know that I am very emotionally intelligent. And if my body needs something or is telling me something, then I listen to it. So if I need a break, I will break. If I need to go exercise, I will go exercise. Whatever it is, I give my body what it needs. And I personally think that's how I can study for so long and be happy and content with that. It's because I'm constantly rewarding myself and I am listening to my body. So that's just something to think about when you're studying or if you're trying to learn how to study for longer periods of time. I also highly recommend using the Pomodoro method. I've talked about this in previous videos. And I also have a study with me video that I will link down below for you guys to use 
years and this can just help keep you accountable to study for longer periods of time if you have someone there studying with you it kind of helps you stay more on task but i must say that i am extremely driven and committed to studying because i enjoy it and when i'm studying i am not trying to memorize i am trying to understand so a lot of you guys ask like how do you memorize all that stuff and it's because i don't it's because i actually understand it and i put in the effort to understand oh <sighs> okay i hope that covered it all so that's majority of how i study in medical school that's how it's matured since my last video you can go back to that video i'll also link that down below to give you guys an idea of how i used to study so yes thank you guys so much for watching once again subscribe if you're not already subscribed join our herd we'd be happy to have you and yes until next time take care of yourselves be kind to yourselves continue to work hard and all that good stuff okay bye Get out of one piece Or maybe two And if I don't It's okay cause I've got all of you